files. Press start to begin. Hello and welcome back to the Super Bonus Round. And for, unfortunately, the last time for a very long time, we're going to the games! Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? When I, when I was recording, um... Uh, the, the side quest stuff with Christine for, uh, the Kingdom Hearts 2 episodes when we were finishing up with the ultimate weapon. Uh, she was trying to learn how to do the gams, and I, and she's like, she's like, how do you do it like that? I had to explain it to her, I'm like, well, when you say the gams, you have to say it like you're trying to take a shit when you're saying it. Cause that's what it sounds like when I do it. There's Danny. Stand back, sweet cheeks. I'll take care of this. Wow. Christine's a Danny. Anyway. Whippy, whippy, whippy. <laughs> that little stance of his is so weird. Yeah. Shit. God, he really is wimpy, 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 because he fucking flails as soon as someone hits him. So yeah, this, this is like, um, as many of you probably already know that have played this franchise, Olympus Coliseum is on almost every single Kingdom Hearts game, except for the next one we're doing. And it, I, it's one of, it's the only returning world that I know of that's going to be in uh, Cage 3. So we will return to the games at some point, but not for a long time. Well, basically... At minimum, a couple months. The games is basically, like, with every RPG, some type of battleground training where you... It's basically a grind fest. That's yeah, basically it's like, what it it's is. It's like and the Coliseum matches in uh, Tales. Yeah, so... Um... And oddly you know, enough, just like Tails, it has cameo battles. Like, if you, if you do like the harder ones, you, there are cameos of uh, characters from past Tails games. Plus, like, not, Vis you know, Vesperia like I said. has Kratos from Symphonia. Um, I don't. I think that's the only ones I know. I know Symphonia has some of the uh, SNES Tails characters in their Coliseums, but I, I never did it personally. Well, anyway, back to my point at hand. Mm -hmm. RPGs have some type of battle system in place because just like Pokemon they have the battle frontier which is essentially a grind fest on its own just for the sake of battling and doesn't advance the story in no shape or form where, right so basically every RPG well most I'm not I shouldn't say every but most RPGs have this battle slash training slash grinding session or level that you can benefit from to either max out your level, uh, unlock certain items or abilities, unlock certain attires or uh, certain achievements for max battles or different types of battles, etc. The list goes on and on, but it's it's a common engine in an RPG game. Tell me about it, sister. That's my Danny, point Danny was just trying to get with uh, Aqua, but he, she wasn't having any, any of it, and he dropped nice a pun. Try. Nice try, Danny. He, tried to, he dropped a pun, too. He's like, I've heard all about Terra. Terra this, Terra that. More like Terra Bull. Speaking of Danny, I think I shared it with you not too long ago. Um, Do you to tell that story? It'll be nice. No, the comparison between Ben Franklin and Frank Reynolds is there even a dis is there even a difference? Let's see. They were both famous Philadelphians. They're both successful entrepreneurs. They both hate the government, and they both love banging dirty whores. I want to ask Reynolds if Ben, ben Franklin ever did. I want to ask if Ben Franklin ever did, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff you don't learn in history books, and I, I'd be very surprised if he didn't. You know, you're right. Exactly my point. But Frank, we know for sure. Likewise. Now, let's start with a few bases. That's why he's my spirit animal. Ah, women never change. So I suppose you still want me to go and get you signed up. 
Meet me in a vestibule when you're ready. Did you want to tell that Danny DeVito story? Oh, shit. This is the one right. and only time you can do it, because we're not right. seeing right. Phil T's right. for a long time. All right, so just just, just let it drag out a little bit here. Okay, this is a very important story, people. So, I think it was not this, not, um, it was last Sunday, I believe. No, it was, yeah, it was last, it was last weekend. Okay, so, as you all know, I've been dealing with a battle with my, um, with my shoulder. Long story short, there's severe inflammation due to the bones rubbing together. Basically, kind of like bone spurs, but it's it's actually the actual bones rubbing together. You know, causing the friction, which is actually causing them to grind. So, causing inflammation to kind of act as like an airbag almost. So, anyway, I had I had to get an MRI done. The um, the week, not last week, but the week before that. So, I was heavily sedated, medical, medicine-wise, because obviously being claustrophobic, being on an MRI machine is no good. So I was pretty, I was pretty out of it. Um, probably for the whole weekend, actually. So then, Sunday, Sunday came about. I woke up, and I was. I was freaking out because I had this really messed up dream. Um, so I told John about it first because, like, I, I, I especially because it involved, well, Danny DeVito. So, who we reference all the time, who plays Frank Reynolds, who is yeah. the actual voice of, um, Philatides. Uh, of who? Philatides. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Phil. Yeah, Phil. Yeah. So, um, Phone Phil. So, anyway, I had this dream where I was in Atlantic City, you know, because it's a casino town and everything, and of course it's, you know, Frank... Danny DeVito basically portrays the life of Frank Reynolds pretty damn well. Uh, even in, even most in his own life, but not, not to a whole lot. So, you know, uh, there was like some event going on, uh, and Danny was there gambling and stuff like that. So, you know, I sat down with him and I was like, oh my God, it's Danny DeVito. I worship the ground you walk on. You know, I love you as Frank Reynolds. I mean, your, your career is amazing. So apparently we had, you know, got drinks and like we were talking, making jokes and everything else. And apparently we got so drunk that we were coming up with ideas. Well, apparently, I, like, I, I sort of fell asleep in the dream, but I kind of, like, passed out, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So, apparently, like, Danny and I had gotten so messed up that we were talking about opening up this business and stuff, and apparently, like, we, um, actually, let me, actually, might still have it. Because I'm kind of losing a little bit of my... You wrote it down. Oh, yeah, in the thing. Um... So... Um... Okay. All right. So. Oh uh, yeah. So we had gotten drunk. He had, and he had accused me of stealing like five dollars a joint, and saying that his that saying something about being copyrighted about rum, ham, egg, and roasting this bone and stuff like that. Again, it got really weird. So apparently I'd passed out in a dream or something, and then... Oh, hey, Zach! We were, uh, we were gonna talk about, like... Apparently we had talked about making a business, but apparently Danny, like, double-crossed me or something. So, so, like, I, like, hired a lawyer, right? And we were going to sue Danny DeVito for harassment and stuff like that. 
And apparently, like, we talked to his wife. His wife was, like, in tears saying that Danny was going senile. So, they, you know, she invited us over to the mansion to, like, straighten things out. And the lawyer came as well. And, and like, but he had, like, a bunch of, like, family and friends over and stuff like that. So, and, like, apparently... So we had, like, they were going, apparently what I didn't know was they were, like, secretly, like, going, they were running, like, this underground thieve ring, where, like, they were stealing wallets and, like, purses and stuff, and they were just going through all of everything. So I ended up, like, it was me, it was me, um, it was me, the lawyer, and I think, yeah, my mom, too. We were led, we were, like, led into this big room, and we waited for them. And then this guy and woman came in, and they started going through, like, my mom's purse that was on the table. I ended up, like, bashing the guy's brains at, in, and the woman jumps out the window. Then I locked the doors, and a standoff ensues. And then I woke up. What the fuck? Yeah, I, I don't know if that's I, I, funny, sad, or horrifying. Like, uh, like... Oh yeah, and the la last part was, like, like I said, also the dispute was between Danny and I about a building that was abandoned and we wanted to start a business. Well, Danny wanted to start his own business and I wanted to start one of my own and the building was only big enough for one of them. Hmm. So, all I know is, but that's the problem, like, I remember that. And, like, <laughs> and your gift was just on point. Like, <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? So, I forgot what gif I used. It was the cat that was that looked like it was just like, oh my god. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's that just one. Like, <laughs> like, so, like I'm, I'm sitting here what? just thinking about what happened. I don't know how to respond. Uh, like, what? what is this? I don't even. <laughs> like, I, I, I swear to God, I didn't know whether to laugh. I didn't know whether to cry. I didn't know whether to just, like... Stay out the window and contemplate life because that that was so real like it felt so real, but it wasn't and I don't know if it was just from the From the medication or, or what but I mean, like Probably I said, had a little I, bit to do with the medication Maybe but like you know, I I, I idolize Danny DeVito. I mean he's such he's such an incredible funny and, you know, and not only that, like, he's done some real incredible work behind the scenes, scenes on, like, producing. Like, he and Jack Nicholson did a really interesting movie on Jimmy Hoffa, who was, like, who, like, you know, got unions and stuff involved to protect workers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he, like, played Hoffa's, like, right-hand guy and best friend. And, like, Dan DeVito portrayed it so beautifully. Like, it was such a serious role, too. Because when I look at Danny DeVito, I think, oh, comedian role. Nah, like, he is, he was able to do, like, some serious roles that were actually really on point. I mean, that's what I like about him. He, he knows how to he knows how to find that perfect balance to where it's like, oh, you know him for comedy, but he can really do serious yeah, drama. That's, that's how I feel about the directors of uh, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Avengers. They, they wrote for... They co-created Community, and or at least they worked on it, and then they went on to make two of the best action movies I've seen in recent years. Not just the best Marvel movies that they've done, but action movies. Winter Soldier is like one of my action, favorite action spy thrillers. I can watch that without watching the others and still have a damn ass good time. Oh shit. Yeah. Holy Hydras, it's just a little girl, a little lassie, a little blooper. <laughs> Hades! Eyes upward, Hades. I'm sorry. Is that a mosquito? Where did I put that bug spray? Mosquito? Ah, so good old James Woods. You use mm. Zack and try to cast Terror good old James in the darkness. Woods. So, I take it you're a Used to be good old James Woods. I ain't getting into why he ain't so good no Ooh. more. I see what you did there, Disney. I Wait, see what, what you do? did there. Where when it. Haiti Fun. said spineless Spine chicken heart. Mm. There's you know why they put it that way, right? Shall we say instruction on how to No, elaborate. Never because being it's Disney, you can't say chicken shit. 
It could also be Chicken Hawk, which is like, oh, you're a big tough guy uh, about going to war and all that. But as soon as like, someone but says, someone said, says but he, I know. He specifically said spineless chicken heart. I know, so, but there's also another term that's similar. Spineless. I know, I know, but I also associate but, spineless with the word chicken. chicken. But for anyone that doesn't know what chicken hawk means, it's like, oh, you're big on war and all that. But as soon as someone says, like, oh, well, why don't you go? It's like, oh, no, I'm too afraid. Get back here, Hades. It's like, you, it's all bravado, but when push comes to shove, you, you, you're the first, first to run away. Man, if only I were up against him. Aqua. You gotta avenge me and Terra. <laughs> Oh my god, he's taller than her. And he has an extremely thin waist. Like, holy crap. He looks like a squeezed bottle of toothpaste. <laughs> yeah. And I his mean, hair is the- can't say His all. hair is the bristles on the toothbrush. No, I said to uh, toothpaste. Oh. Why? Because those pants say it all, honey. Oh, fuck. This thing again? Well, oh, you didn't see this because it was—it's one of the side quest bosses in uh, KH1, but it's a main boss here. I never <laughs> one -on -one. No fair, Hades. I suppose that's in the rules. Rule number. Two. But if you look at Zach's Come pants, that's why I said. <laughs> and plus, you said the slim waist. So. He's already here. Don't Zach. <laughs> He really does. My oh my own. god, yeah. Those pants, honey. <laughs> and I'm referring Wouldn't to it be a skirt? Aqua. He's wearing a no, skirt referring... and blue tights. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I was referring to uh, Zach, not Aqua. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Aqua still looks like she's wearing like a uh, like one of those beach sweaters on her waist. Yeah. Lord knows I used to do that. Yeah, same. We used to do that a lot too. But now I'm at the point in my life where I really enjoy wearing hoodies and sweatshirts. Like, I have a I, light I one that, that I wear now. That so I, I don't have to worry about sweating so much. So, like I can wear it during the winter if it's not too cold. I can also wear it in the summer if it's not way too hot. It's my Twitch hoodie. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's one I got for Christmas. It's like really, really light, and I really love it. Um. I know my, my Fallout hoodie is that. Is like that. Um, very Probably wear it to Anime Next this year. Eat shit, Hades! Eat shit and die. <laughs> Eat shit and die. Whenever I think of Duke Nukem, I think of the fact I'm like, he was also Big the Cat in Sonic Adventure, and that's weird. Who? John St. John voiced Duke Nukem and Big the Cat in Sonic Adventure. I knew that snow cone wouldn't cut it. The big fat cat that, that, that you did the, had the fishing uh, side missions. Stay tuned. Oh yeah. Froggy? Froggy. That was John St. John. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I hear it the more I listen to him. I'm like, Next oh man. Oh, he doesn't voice him anymore. They recast yeah. the oh, Sonic yeah, characters the like twice we now. Celebrate. Huh? That won't really be necessary. Hmm. Hey, how about one date? Oh, you mean no? I have to leave right away. Oh, uh, Zach's trying to get it in. So much training to do. Fair enough. And I'm still a work in progress, after all. Zach, you have a girlfriend, well, this? and she's alive in this uh, universe. Then we go on a date. I, <laughs> I can't make any promises. Can't speak for her acting, though. Yes. Great. It's oh seven. God! Hero yeah. Here I come. You forgot oh, that they were an item God. in seven. Oh, we won't be seeing her again. Not that I know oh, of. God. It's over already. <gasps> Man, I, I hope we see the original Hollow Bastion gang in three. Uh, Aqua, what's wrong? If anything, just to no. hear the Sid voice one more time. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, but yours, I mean. That could be too far in between. Strength Who knows? We'll say though. They said there's gonna be fewer worlds, know, but they're not gonna make up for it Start by having the worlds be larger than normal. Starting to figure that out. I look at you and Zach, and I can tell there's something more. You've got strength in your heart too. Never stop trying. 
and one day you might just yeah for you voltron fans out there young herc is voiced by josh yeah. keaton the same guy who plays you shiro keep fighting hmm. he's also uh oh josh keaton's also revolver ocelot in metal gear solid 3 Ooh. Yeah, I, so I'm just kind of waiting for her to say, you know, Aqua, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't go on a date, but we did forge a G-Link with Zach. That's my wow. last one. That that might be my last one, because we don't get any more D-Links, I think. All right, so next time on the Super Bonus Round, let's go greet Rich's buddy one last time. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. See ya. See ya.